Hello there guys, uh, welcome to this video. Here I'll be talking a little bit about the basic Nuke user interface. And please remember that um, here I'm not talking about how to s open Nuke scripts or save Nuke scripts. I'm going to focus on how you're going to work inside the Nuke interface, like customizing it or how exactly you're going to reach different parts of it and how you can save the layouts. So it's completely related to the UI. I'll talk about opening Nuke scripts and saving Nuke scripts later on in a different video altogether. So this is completely the basic video. You are free to skip it if you've already worked with Nuke beforehand. But this is for those of you who have never actually touched Nuke. So let's get started. Here in this video I'm just going to talk a little bit about the different parts of the Nuke interface and how we can start customizing it because later on in the entire course I'll be using my own custom interface and not the default one because I'm not very comfortable with it. So to get started with, um, pretty much everything in Nuke is divided into what we call panels and panels are uh, whatever you see here which are cutting into the screens. So first of all we have uh, the major panels by default visible in this workspace right now so I'll just name a couple of them. So here on the uh, rightmost side you have the nodes panel uh, or nodes pane or toolbar whatever you want to call it this is where you'll access the most common tools which you will use within nuke next apart from this the major other panel you'll be using is a viewers panel uh, this corresponds exactly to the viewers node that you have here in the node graph uh, here at the bottom in this precise panel uh, you have three different nodes uh, sorry three different panels docked as tabs I'll talk a little bit about what exactly these are in a little while so here on the side you have another panel which is for the properties. So what exactly are these panels and how can you use it? Well to begin with unlike a software like Maya, uh, Nuke allows you complete customization of the interface uh, just like how you have in Blender. So uh, basically what you could do is uh, pretty much all these panels start with this uh, uh, kind of a division which you can see here at the top corner. The, this is the icon which you want to go to. If you just click on this you get this uh, well, context menu where you can start doing some operations so I can split this panel and you can see I just got another panel all panels are characterized by this uh, top header with the maximize and close buttons and the panel options on the side here you can as you can see split it horizontal or vertical you can float it or basically have a floating window of that panel you can dock stuff into this and use it around this is what I'll be majority of the time using to uh, have my viewers panel because it's much more comfortable like this so apart from this uh, m most of the panels which you want can be added into this one main major thing which you want to uh, take a look at is this uh, show tabs because if you take off the check mark which you have here basically X mark in Nuke means that the option is on so if I take it off you can no longer see the topmost panel what you have to do is if you go to this top line which turns orange by default it opens up the panel otherwise it's closed that is what has happened here in the notes pane if you go to the top you can see it's closed so basically that is how we can customize the interface and there are loads of interfaces and uh, that you can find under the layout section so if you want to start from the basics like with no layouts at all I can just go start clicking this X mark and pretty much all these things would close and then I can close out this uh, uh, sorry close out the pane completely close pane and basically the entire pane is gone so I can start closing out panes which are uh, like not really necessary for me so if I close all the panes now I can basically start redesigning my entire layout from the beginning so if I tell okay I wanted um, uh, this entire thing to be split vertically and I wanted this toolbar to be at the top and I'll turn off the tabs on the toolbar so my toolbar from being a vertical one here on the side is now a horizontal one uh, most of you have a wide monitor uh, might uh, want to uh, consider putting this at the bottom with the progress bar on the sides and such so it's up to you uh, so apart from this I can just go let's say I split this uh, horizontally I put my properties bin inside this and then I can put whatever I want so let's say my viewer inside this so basically you can customize nuke however you want and there are some basic layouts here which you can uh, start trying nuke out with sorry I just went full screen over there okay so back to the recording layout 
So you have several layouts there which you can test out, but I'll be using my own layout later on. So you know how to customize the interface. Let me talk about the different things which you can populate the interfaces with. So first thing we have is this node graph. This is one of the most important things that you'll work with. So I'm not going to give a description about it right now because when we are working with it, we'll definitely be talking about it a lot. So apart from that, what we have is this viewer panel. The easiest way of recognizing the viewer is that it has all the play controls and a lot of display controls. This is where you'll actually see what is happening. If you have a dual monitor setup, what you would usually, uh, well, most of the people I know usually, uh, they just float this viewer, put this on another monitor, uh, full screen and basically you have a complete monitor dedicated to viewers and another monitor where you're actually working so it's quite handy in such a manner so apart from that you have what you call a properties bin this is where you're going to edit the properties of nodes so how it's going to work is you have nodes here in the node graph you're going to edit the properties here and you see the result in the viewer and then you export out the entire uh, composite that you have done so basically that's how the interface works now let's actually see how you're going to customize the interface in different ways so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of nodes here I'll talk about creating nodes a bit later on but uh, let me just create a couple of them okay so I've just created a couple of nodes I'll also add some extra nodes here and I'll put this into the viewer now I just got some nodes over here and I'm going to populate this with as many things as possible so let me just take another checkerboard I'll put this in as uh, a mask and this is a secondary connection which I don't want to work with right now so I have basically this Okay, and I'm going to put a right node on this guy. Okay, so what I want to show you is, right now I have arrows which are well, almost, right? Okay, almost, almost pointing in all directions. So I have arrows which are going down to the side, to the back, and okay, this is supposed to go up, but I don't have a node which is going to take it up right now. So I'm going to improvise on it later on, so let me just leave it as such. I'll go into my uh, edit, and I'll go under preferences. This is the actual Nuke software preferences. So if I go in here, I have loads of things that I can customize. So first thing I would do is, I'll go into appearance. So most of them find that the entire uh, interface of Nuke is kind of dark or something that it's too light so you have the all the options which you need to edit to actually customize the interface however you want here so I'm not going to go into that you can actually quite easily understand what's happening here the one thing I have found is the fonts oh, well uh, I don't know about you but for me they're just a bit little bit too big so I usually just dial it down a little bit so it's kind of smaller and I get a bit more real estate I guess well it's not much but still a little bit so apart from that if I go to the node graph what I have here here is the option of coloring my arrows according to the direction. I'll be talking about tips and tricks later on. Uh, so I'll be talking about how exactly you can use the directional arrows to your benefit. Apart from that, you have all of the customization controls over here. One thing I can talk you know, tell you is to turn on snap to grid and show grid. You can see the grid uh, over here and you can see the nodes actually snap to these grids. So these are a few places where you can go to to actually customize the interface of Nuke. Now, apart from this, the one more major area that you need to customize as soon as you start working with Nuke is the actual project. So you need to set the project settings inside Nuke before you start working with anything or basically before you create an output. Uh, it's not that you can't create an output without it, but it's definitely recommended. So if you go into edit, you can go to project settings over here or as you can see the shortcut is S. When you click on it, it opens up in the properties bin. The main thing is uh, whenever you have a project setting out, okay, my project setting... Uh, it tells me where exactly my directory is and a couple of basic things and other things are hidden over here at the bottom. Let me just scroll down to it. 
Okay, so as you can see here, I have my frame range. What is the exact range of frames I'm working with? My uh, frame rate. I have my size. Uh, usually people try to edit it manually, but I suggest uh, to actually read in your images and then start working with it. I'll talk about it more in the next videos. I'll not go into it here. Apart from that, we have proxy mode, which is a scale here. I definitely do not suggest using this proxy mode directly over here. I actually suggest writing out a proxy image and then using it. Uh, but apart from that, these are the basic settings. And also, if you're using stereoscopic or uh, any kind of additional camera views to render out with, so you have additional views which you can work with over here. Of course, you have the majority of the function, uh, uh, the major function of Nuke, or the major benefit of using Nuke, which is uh, working with linear space, which is converts to RG sRGB space by default, and all the LUT functions are available here. And if you did not understand what all of that mumbo jumbo was, forget it. Uh, not really required. I'll talk about image channels and LUT a little bit later, so you get to know about it there. Okay, so uh, just to recap, what is the exact main uh, uh, thing which I wanted to talk about in this video? I wanted to tell you how you can customize the interface. Next thing I wanted to tell you is how you can go to the preferences and start uh, getting values in from there. I just told you what the different panes are. I'll, okay, I missed a couple of things. I'll just go into those briefly. So, if you go into edit, you have the node parameter here. And over here, you can see pretty much, uh, you can create majority of the, okay, this, um, you have majority of the functions which you would actually need if you're working with nodes anyway. So apart from that, if you have the actual node uh, uh, node pane open, let me just split it horizontally. I'll put in this pane as a nodes pane. Uh, whenever you want to create something, most of these icons are actually self-explanatory. So here in the beginning, you can see it's kind of looks like an image input or a image processing. So this actually works majority of the time with it. So let me just open it up so you can see all the options inside it. So you can see read, write, the constant, checkerboard, all the stuff which you can actually create or view an image with. Next, this is the creation or you, this is where you actually create input. So this is where you're actually creating stuff which... Uh, you're going to add into your image. Next, you can see a clock, so it's related to time. You can see some layers and channels, so basically these operations work with channels. Uh, this is something which is very important. I have a complete video which will be dedicated to channels later on. Apart from that, uh, here you can see this is all related to color mats. Uh, this three sections stand for RGB and all of this is related to manipulating colors as mathematics. So I will not go into majority of that, but uh, just so you know. Apart from that, we have filters, just like filters in Photoshop, blur, sharpen, and all this uh, effects which you can apply on uh, images. So ap apart from that, we have keyers. This is where you'll actually key out colors from images. I have a complete video which I'll be creating dedicated to knowing how to create a key, but I'll not be going into each and every keyer in depth because there are already too many videos about that online. Apart from that, we have layers or merging. So here we have different ways of merging images together. Remember that here we had different ways of merging channels together, but here we are actually merging multiple channels together at the same time in different ways. Uh, then we have transform, 3D, particles, and other stuff. Uh, plus, the version of Nuke that I'm using is the latest. Um, uh, this would be uh, Nuke version uh, th uh, 6.3 version 7. So, this is the latest one which I downloaded as a PLE uh, just uh, in the morning before I created this video. So that's the majority of the things. Now, when you come to working with Nuke, a few basic things which will help you out. Here in the node graph, hitting tab opens up this uh, uh, HUD where you can actually type in whatever you want. So let's say I wanted a checkerboard. I can just type in checkerboard in here and instead of going into the nodes pane, I can create it directly. And apart from that, uh, you have spacebar, which actually maximizes the current view. If you're familiar with Maya, it's the same shortcut. It maximizes the current view your mouse is under. So that is one major thing. And apart from that, if you have customized your layout in any specific manner, you can actually go to edit, uh, sorry, layout and save it as that particular layout. Uh, but remember that if you save it as a layout, you're replacing the layout over here at the top. So we uh, just be careful about that. And most of the times it's better to work full screen unless you are using references from outside softwares. Now, okay, did I miss anything else over here? 
okay that's pretty much the majority of the stuff uh, one thing I would like to mention is that whenever you have a viewer uh, you have a shortcut on the keyboard uh, which is a title key uh, the key right below your escape this is the key you use to open and close or toggle between these open viewer windows this is the shortcut key I'll be using majority of the times to keep the viewer off my screen so that it's not bothering me when I'm working so that's one major thing which I'll keep using all the time okay so pretty much that's few of the basics and uh, that's how I usually work so I'll be talking a lot more about uh, all these things later on so next uh, video I'll not be in Nuke but I'll be in Photoshop I'll be showing you what exactly image channels are and how exactly you can start working with them so I hope you found this video useful it's not a necessity that you can actually go through the whole thing but still if you did wow hooray you'll were actually listening to me the whole time. Superb. Congratulations. So, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Goodbye.